29.30. Wait, if we cut it tight, we could get some 10 footers out of there. Well, it looks like the break on the end here is gonna eat up almost four feet of wood. So I guess we're gonna be conservative and we'll go for 12 foot lumber. If we have to, we can cut it down to 10. I think that makes sense. Well, the sawmill is set up again, and today, hopefully, by the end of the day, we'll be able to turn all the logs that we milled, cut up yesterday, and hauled off the backside of the property into lumber. Our wood miser is currently on the trailer. If you haven't seen a lot of our sawmilling videos, it's been in a few different configurations. We talked about this a little bit in a video we did a few days ago talking about chainsaw and bandsaw mills and kind of the differences between them. Those two bed sections that are sitting over there were attached to this and it was not on a trailer for most of the time that we've used it because we needed the additional length for the timber frame that we were milling. So today, obviously, we're on the trailer and we're limited to 17 feet, which, which works because the logs that we're gonna be cutting, we've already bucked them down to just over 12 feet. So it's gonna work out really good. If you've been watching our videos for a while, you know how time consuming setting up the sawmill is. And we kind of found a little cheater method um, with the jacks. I grabbed a socket. I wasn't sure what size these were, if I'd have a socket that would fit. But we actually found that you can use the drill and the leveling jacks and really speed up the calibration and adjustment process down to maybe 15 minutes or less. When we had the sawmill on the bed configuration without the trailer, it had these legs on it, and those legs are a nightmare to keep calibrated, at least the way we set them up. We use these trailer pads thinking that it would give them a good stable spot to work, and it turns out that the trailer pads ended up shifting a bunch because of the, the weight of the logs we were dropping on them, and uh, the concrete actually made the sawmill jump around a lot. You would think it would be a nice level surface for it to bear on. It turns out every time you bump it, the sawmill moves. And if, if the concrete pad is not absolutely level and all of them are not absolutely level, basically your sawmill's persistently out of calibration. In hindsight, we should have just poured a slab. It would have saved us way more time than it would have taken to pour the slab. Of course, then we'd have a slab out here to deal with, but that's another conversation. So we've got the sawmill uh, set up using those jacks on the trailer. This will only be the second time I've actually used this sawmill on the trailer. So it's kind of weird because it's backwards from what I'm used to doing. The way we had it set up before, the mill head was at the other end and we were milling this direction. Now because of the trailer and how it's designed, we're actually gonna be milling away, which it'll probably take a little bit of time to get adjusted to. And then the other challenge is the height of the sawmill. This was very low to the ground, which had pros and cons. One, it sucked because you had to get down really low to see underneath of it to do uh, jacking for taper in the logs and also to adjust the legs. So we've kind of had to figure out a new method. We're going to be using that bottle jack, uh, which I borrowed from a friend. He doesn't know that yet. So if you're watching this video and I didn't tell you, thanks for letting me borrow the bottle jack. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to use that to adjust the log height at the mill head to take out the taper and get a nice straight cut. If this is the first video that you're stumbling on, uh, jump back a couple videos. We started a few days ago on this project of clearing out some dead uh, trees that were on our property. We started with falling them and kind of putting them where we want. We actually did a really fun video kind of joking lightheartedly about the macho-ness and ridiculousness of all the tree falling videos that circulate YouTube. So if you haven't seen that one, give it a watch. It's a chuckle. And then we also did a video yesterday kind of uh, getting these logs bucked up and getting them transported over over here closer to the sawmill where it would be easier for us to do good work. A lot of this wood is blued pine and it's not ideal to use it for studs but uh, because it's so beautiful and it's pretty highly sought after wood but at this moment because we have a fir timber frame we're not really looking to put blue pine as accent woods in the house yet. So at this point it doesn't make sense to deck all this wood and just have a huge pile of logs that are being used for nothing and then go cut down other trees to make the lumber that we need. So we're going to cut this stuff up 
as long as it's solid wood, um, we're gonna use it for the lumber to build the walls. Again, if this is the first video on our channel that you're stumbling on, jump way back. We've been working on our house for a couple of years now. We're building a timber frame ICF SIP house. And so we don't have a lot of lumber in the house yet. We do have some in the SIPs, but it's not much. But the interior walls, they're not gonna be structural. And so we can just stick frame those. It'll be the fastest, most efficient way to do it. So we're gonna use regular lumber. We could buy it, but we have the sawmill. We like to be outside. And so we're gonna be using resources that we already have to create those materials, which is something that we're having fun doing. We've done that a lot already, already on the house. And uh, where we can, we buy materials where it makes sense, where we cannot do maybe a better product at a better price. But where we can, we try to make what we can to offset the cost of building the house. One benefit to letting these trees stand for a while as dead trees is that they dry out a bunch while they're standing. One of the things we learned from our timber frame is that when you cut a living tree that is very wet, uh, there's a lot of movement in the log, which is known for timber framing. We put the timber frame together very quickly after sawmilling it. That's a question we got all the time was, don't you need to let the log season, or excuse me, the timber season? And that's the ex opposite of what you want to happen because if you let them season on the ground, they'll warp and twist on the ground. You'll never get your timber frame together. So we put it together green and the joinery resists that movement to some degree. It's not perfect, but it's enough that the timbers stay strong and usable. So this wood is quite dry compared to the stuff that we milled for our timber frame. I'm hoping two things. One, it's light. It's much easier to work with. The green trees were extremely heavy. And two, I'm hoping that the dimensional stability of this wood is, is better. We are going to sticker this because we're not working on the walls right now, but we plan to work on them in the near future. So it makes sense to get this stuff milled up on a nice day. And hopefully after stacking and stickering this stuff, any residual moisture will kind of even out in the wood and it won't warp and twist too much and we can get it installed before it has a chance to do too much funny, funny business. I'm a little bit concerned that we need to keep an eye out for good wood. We need to make sure that the, the logs are sound. We are going to be using these to hold up walls, which are maybe not structural, meaning they're not load bearing for the roof, but that doesn't mean that they don't have a lot of weight and structure to them. So we're going to be kind of keeping an eye on that because some of these uh, logs did have a little bit of rot in them in different areas. That's going to become super obvious once we turn it into lumber. And if we find a bad spot, hopefully we can either cut it out or we can just mill around it. Overall, I'd say the wood looks pretty good. I mean, we weren't sure. Um, we, we thought maybe that the trees were in worse shape than they are. Having sawn through them, they look pretty good. If you haven't seen the video, this tree right here actually came from right beside our house. And we were forecasted to get a violent uh, storm that was very rare. They were, they were forecasting 50 mile an hour winds and snow in September, which has not happened on the ground in a forecast area since there's weather records. So because of that, we thought, well, it's dead. We're not sure the condition of it. We better get it down. We did cut it down. We put it over here. We actually did some fun projects with the top and we cut a post out of that. So if you haven't seen that video, jump back. We get the chainsaw mill out, fire it up, and it's a beautiful piece of wood. So I think today we're gonna to be making some lumber for walls, which is a bit of a tragedy because that beautiful wood is gonna be hidden behind whatever finishes we decide to use. So I think getting that wood out of there first makes sense to get room for us working by the sawmill. So why don't we start there once that's kind of done and then we'll shift to getting things off the trailer. Um, hopefully after a couple logs, we'll get a rhythm going and uh, our productivity will skyrocket. We've got a lot of logs to get through and the setup is usually the most time consuming part. Once you're set up, the mill goes super fast. So let's start with those two and we'll go from there. I think if I made a, a cheater piece of paper or something that laminated to the sawmill, that might be nice. So I can use this to cheat quickly and figure out what the yield of a log will be. I know that if I've got, say, seven and a quarter inches in the log butt, and then I measure down for my vertical dimension and I have six and three eighths, I know I can get four 
uh, four two by eights out of that log. If I have eight inches on the vertical, which is probably more probable if it's seven and a quarter by eight, I can get five two by eights. There are all kinds of apps and stuff like that for this. I know the Forestry Forum has a few apps that are super helpful for board footage yield calculations, beam calculations, like what's the smallest log that I can get this beam out of, and it'll tell you what the circumference or the diameter of the tree is. So those apps are super helpful. I haven't really found one that does this, and I guess it's pretty straightforward. If you were doing this all the time, you probably have all this memorized anyway. So let's go with right there. That'll give us a good yield on this one. We should get four, four boards out of this log. You can't disagree. That's some beautiful wood. If there was a wood prison, we may go into wood prison for turning this into structural lumber. But there isn't, so we're not going to. we can probably actually get a board above that line. We've got enough wood to do it. So I think we'll add an inch and a half and get an extra board for free. It's gonna have a, just, a, just a tiny bit of weighing on it, but a free board's a free board. Now we're a sixteenth over. Why is that? people in this world, maybe you watching this video, who paid a lot of money for blue pine like that, and you're really mad at us right now, but what can you do? We have to build with what we have. Uh, I do want to make one comment. If you're building in an area with building codes, you would not be allowed to do this because they have to have a stamp on them in order to be approved for use. That's kind of how ridiculous building codes are in some ways because that lumber with no stamp is probably about as good as the lumber with a stamp. But with no stamp, the inspector would decline that. We've even heard of that with timber stamping. One of the reasons we were able to build our own timber frame um, is we don't have building codes in this area. And so we were able to use our own timbers and we were able to, to do that because we don't have to go through any inspection process. So there's always that. We're having nothing but problems with the sawmill today again. If you watch the video, where I had a young man working with me. Um, we were making lumber for the man basket project and we just couldn't get the sawmill to work. We ended up wasting three hours of our day only to find out that the little solenoid that's a fuel shutoff solenoid was stuck and we were able to free that and we got it to run. Well, it's just being a booger today. I don't know why, like ran absolutely like a top during our timber frame and now it seems like every time we run it we're just having little fussy issues. Another thing came to light. I couldn't figure out why our lumber would, was not the correct dimension and I'm not sure how it happened or when or why but anyway it looks like the scale that we use for, for the height adjustment was off by a quarter of an inch which is a lot. 
and it'll really drive you nuts when you're trying to do your math. Like my cheater board here, obviously, um, I was trying to use these measurements and nothing was working. And so I ended up having to do a lot of head scratching. So suffice it to say, we've wasted a tremendous amount of time getting four, four boards. And I was kind of afraid this would happen. It's now raining. And saw milling in the rain really sucks. All of your tools get wet, all of your tools get rusty, if you haven't thought about that. If you're saw milling out here, anything precious like our timber framing square, everything just gets all covered in rust. We ruined a lot of tools during our timber frame workshop, but we had to, we had to mill in the rain. And right now, we don't have to do that. All those brand new blades over there, those are all getting get wet and they're all gonna get covered in rust. So I think we're gonna have to shut this thing down. If, if we don't get a break in the rain, we'll have to pick this project up another day. Ah, all right, we checked the radar. Um, it seems like maybe it's mostly south of us and maybe we'll be kind of clear now, hopefully. We're gonna try to stick with it and get this project done. We don't have time to do it tomorrow. We've got a chipper coming in two days. So we've got to get this done today. Um, I think we worked through a lot of the problems with the sawmill. Here's hoping we're in the clear. So hopefully we can just put our head down and make some lumber now. Um, we certainly cannot do uh, one hour for four boards. That's not gonna work. Looks like there's kind of a tall tree in here. Seven and seven eighths, seven and five eighths, so we're too high. Yeah, probably a little much. Seven and five eighths, seven and five eighths. And according to this, we have nine inches. We need nine and five eighths to get six boards, so we're gonna only be able to get five boards out of that. How'd we do that? Perfect. Good. Thumb. Good. Good. Open your bucket, not the thumb. Open, yep, good. Okay, six boards, like 45 minutes. Still trying to get in a groove, kind of still having some problems, but I think we're getting a lot of those worked out. I think just switching between projects, your brain has to kind of switch gears, and you know, if you don't run a sawmill every day, guess what, your brain doesn't think like a sawmill does. So here's hoping uh, we're through all the problems, and uh, yeah, we only have like 15 logs to go. Gotta keep going. It's not fair, I watched Anna do it three times, so I kinda got it figured out, you know.
to go. Anna says we're definitely going to Wood Jail. Wood is just too beautiful to bury in a stud wall, but I guess we'll have to do our time. today. Really? Well, that's, that's our work for the day. Feels like we put a lot of work in and I think sometimes this is why if you guys watch some of my other videos where I spend time fixing and repairing things not when I'm trying to use them this is why. Um, I feel like we only had a few hours of productive time between the weather and other things that we had to do today. And a good chunk of it early on got eaten up by equipment malfunctions and other things that were odd that I still can't figure out how things got miscalibrated. But anyway, they were. And uh, the sawmill's still not running right. Um, we did do some basic diagnostics and stuff and it ran good enough to do what we do today. But you know me, if you know me, I don't like things that run halfway. I'm trying to keep things running good around here. But we did get, looks like 13 two by eights that are ready to go. And we got 10 two by sixes, 12 footers. They are beautiful, guys. They're beautiful wood. There's some spalting in there. It's purple. I mean, it's just terrible. I feel, the more I cut on these stinking logs, the worse I feel. I, I'm sure I'm not the first person to put beautiful wood inside of an interior wall. I'm sure we have lots more trees. So when we get around to it, we'll mill those up and we'll make something out of those. I'm just kind of soothing my conscience, if you can tell. Um, we did make a lot of sawdust today and that felt good kind of once we got running got a lot of sawdust right here it's a lot softer to walk on than the rocks and then we've got a big chunk of slab wood uh, that we're going to actually put through the wood chipper that's part of the reason i need to get this stuff done is we've got the wood chipper coming and um, right now we've got a mountain of firewood and this is pine it's not ideal for firewood we don't really need firewood but we do need wood chips. And so I'd like to run that through the chipper. So we've only got a couple of days to get this stuff milled up. I really wanted to get it done today because I've got other things that I need to do tomorrow. I know you guys think this is all we do, right? We don't have a life outside of what we do on YouTube. We do, I assure you. I do wanna say one thing though about this pile. I've seen in the, in the history of our channel a lot of criticisms about the amount of wood that we threw away uh, with our timber frame. And I say throw away. If you've been watching our videos, you know that basically nothing has gone to waste. Nothing. We've used everything from wood chips to flooring to firewood somehow. But in the rush to get the timber frame done, we simply did not have time to get every last little inch of wood out of the logs. If you've run a sawmill, which I'm guessing most of the people who are criticizing that have never run a sawmill, you would know that resawing or taking this wood, putting it back on the sawmill and making something out of it is horribly time consuming. And if it's yielding just tiny little bits of wood, trust me, run a sawmill, mill some logs up, you'll understand why we did what we did. Even now, we're still not going to take the time to make anything out of this stuff. It's just going to go in the chipper. Just because we don't need scant little boards. We don't need them. And it's a tremendous amount of work. You're actually better off if you have the logs to put a new log up there and make a lot of good wood. So not that I'm giving advice. I'm just kind of educating and sharing why a lot of this stuff is becoming something else. So if you think that you can mill half inch wood out of there, knock yourself out. That stuff's going to be chips in the garden. One more day, I feel like we should have got a lot more done. It feels good to get this log out of here, so we've got a lot more room to walk over here. Clearly, we've still got a ton of wood left that we've got to get through, but it does feel good to start having lumber sitting on the ground. We're hoping to make a couple of units, six inch and eight inch, of course nominal, and uh, hopefully that will yield a couple of nice fat stacks of lumber. That'll feel nice to have all that stuff stacked, stickered, and drying so that when we get ready to build the interior walls, we have the lumber and it's ready to use. Alyssa tells me dinner's ready again. Time to go spend time with the family. I gotta make a decision about whether I have time to do this stuff tomorrow or whether we'll have to bag it or maybe reschedule the chipper. Neither of those is really a good option. So maybe over dinner, we'll make that decision. 
You'll find out on the future video.